All right. Welcome and thank you everyone for attending today's technical assistance webinar. This webinar is presented by Amity Foundation acting as the third party administrator for LA County's Justice, Care and Opportunities Department and the CFCI Care Grants. The CFCI or Care First Community Investment grants are the result of ballot measure J voted in by LA County residents in 2020. Care First Community Investment Funds are intended to be invested directly into communities and alternatives to incarceration that address negative outcomes caused by racially driven criminal legal system and inequalities and long-term economic disinvestment. Today's webinar is being recorded. You do not have to be on camera. However, understand that if you are on camera, your image may be captured in the recording. Staying on the webinar represents your consent to being recorded. So please note the following legal disclaimer. The material presented does not constitute legal advice and is intended to provide you all information. Organizations and individuals should always independently verify that any information is presented and that it's appropriate before acting onto it. Next slide. So um, today we are going to, um, I'll introduce today's presenters actually. So my name is Mina Cabrion. I am the training and technical assistance coordinator for Amity Third Party Administration. I'll pass it on over to Rebecca. Hey everybody, I'm Rebecca Gray. I'm the grant administrator for the JCOD CFCI CARE Grants. I'm going to pass it over to Bradley. Hello, I'm uh, Bradley Gusick, a senior accountant here at Amity and work with, um, with, uh, with budgets and financials for um, the JCOD CFCI um, um, grantees. I pass it on to Lorenzo. Hello everyone, my name is Lorenzo Gonzalez. I'm a senior accountant here at Amity, working on uh, budgets as well. Amazing, thank you so much everyone. So at Amity, we incorporate teachings that center the community before we begin our work. Today, we will use the LA County Land Acknowledgement to recognize the price paid by individuals that has resulted in efforts such as care first community investments. We recognize that we occupy land originally and still inhabited and cared for by the Tahunga, Tataviam, Serrano, Quiche, and Chumash peoples. We honor and pay respect to their elders and descendants. We acknowledge that settler colonization resulted in the genocide of the first peoples. This acknowledgement demonstrates our responsibility and commitment to truth, healing, and reconciliation, and to elevating the stories, culture, and community of the original inhabitants of Los Angeles County. Next slide. Hello. Um, so starting off with the agenda here is um, we're going to be talking about budget basics, um, starting off with the purpose of the budgets, um, the importance of comparing your budgets to actuals, um, how to make changes into your budgets. And then um, we, we have some um, tips and, and, and frequently asked questions after that. And then after that, if we still have questions, uh, we'll have a Q&A session. Next slide, please. So for the purpose of budgets, budgets are a planning tool. They exist to plan. Um, they, they are there to help you manage your expenses. They are there to let you know where you are compared to where you thought you were going to be financially. Um, it's important in this case, budgets are not a spending limit. So I know that sometimes people use budgets, let's say with a government and they have a budget and they cannot spend over that. That is not the case here for um, the CFCI grants. Um, however, the funding will remain the same regardless of budget used. So if you go over budget, um, the, the grant amount does not change. <laughs> 
So that is important to know um, that if going over budget, so those those uh, dollars will have to come from another source. But they're not a spending limit, and certainly they're not a spending limit within each individual line. You may go over budget, you may go under budget. These are things that happen. We can adjust later as well. Next slide, please. So this is where we're talking about um, recording your actual amounts to your budget amounts. So um, reporting the actual cost to your budget amount helps you track your project. If you, it, it helps you see where you might be spending too much or maybe where um, you're not in a certain area, not um, um, doing enough in that area. Uh, these reports help you compare to where you're on the project and where you're expected to be when you made your budget. So um, this lets you see, are you, on, are you on track to be where you thought you were gonna be financially? Uh, spending is tracked on a yearly and full project basis. So the full project will be three years. Um, the spending is tracked on a yearly thing, but we're also tracking it on the full project basis. So recording full spending is important even if over budget. So um, I've seen um, instances where uh, they stop record, people have stopped recording expenses because they were gonna go over budget. Well, since it's being tracked on a full project basis, you might be under budget next year, but be on track for the full three year. So recording full spending is important even if you're over budget. Um, next slide, please. So this is the budget to actual form uh, that will be uh, turned in with every quarter for quarterly reporting. Uh, it will have your information in the uh, descriptions as long as well as your budgets. Um, and then each column after where it says three year budgets will be a certain, you know, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter, quarter four, and it will track how much you've spent and what's the sort of balance remaining. Like I said, if it's over budget, it'll show up as a negative. Um, next slide, please. So when doing, uh, when recording your actuals, you're going to want to have backup. Financial backup refers to documents that show proof of those expenses. So this would include documents such as invoices, receipts of purchases, purchase orders, um, all, all of these sorts of things. Uh, it could be uh, credit card statements. Um, backup is not required to be submitted with the quarterly reporting. However, it should be kept as AMI will be spot checking expenses and ensure accuracy of the actual submit submitted, as well as um, any audits that uh, we are requested to do. So they don't have to send in all the receipts, but it is, um, it, you still want to make sure that you record, have them. Uh, so then we can talk about revising your budget. Let's say that you've gone way over budget and, and your original plan isn't really uh, fitting with where you think you're gonna go now. We can revise budgets. So it might be that unforeseen costs have arisen. For example, data collection for reporting takes time, this time and cost may not have been in the original budget, but it's still a cost that you're going to have to record. So that you're going to incur. So maybe you want to allocate some of the money for that way. Uh, cost of material labor has changed since the budget was, was created. Um, you know, we, inflation happens, um, utilities go up, rent goes up, uh, minimum wage goes up. So you might have to adjust because of that. And the focus of work may have shifted since the budget was created. Um, if you're looking at uh, ways to create engagement, um, perhaps you know what you were doing to create the engagement may be better done a different way, and that may um, change what expense is being used there. Um, next slide, please. So how often can I revise my budget? It's every six months, so twice a year. But yeah, um, it's a question we often get, but yes, every six months. Next slide, please. 
So how to make changes to your budget? Well, if you need to make changes to your budget, there is a process. There's a form available that can be requested uh, from your grant advocate who will contact uh, someone here in the county uh, that can be submitted if, if a revision of budget is needed. Budget amounts can be moved from line item to line item and new budget line items can be created, but the total amount for the year must stay the same and all year's budgets must equal each other. So you cannot move from year to year. Uh, next slide, please. So this is the budget revision form. Once again, when this is be requested, it'll be filled out with what your current budget is for all three years. It'll be in the original year one, year two budget um, columns. And then you'd be able to fill out um, the amounts in the revised year one, year two, year three budget columns. Um, and making sure that the total budget down at the bottom equals the same budget as the total amount of the original budget. But once again, costs can be moved from line to line. So if you need to increase your budget for rent, you can move things from off supplies or uh, utilities, because maybe utilities were lower than you thought. So you can do that sort of thing. Or if you had an entirely different cost that fits in with your project that uh, wasn't included in your original budget, say, for example, the uh, uh, cost for uh, recording your reporting, um, you can create an entirely new line as well and move funds around from that too. Next slide, please. So uh, I'd like to pass this off to Lorenzo, uh, talking about some do's and don'ts when submitting a budget. All right, thank you, Bradley. Uh, I see a lot of familiar faces and names. Uh, so I've dealt with a lot of you, it's good to to be in front of you and talk to you. Thank you very much. I just wanted to bring some things up that I see that have been happening a lot that in the future will alleviate any kind of back and forth and things like that. So the most important, you know, these are some things that I have observed as I've been going through and uh, looking at a lot of these budgets. It's important to submit the budget in the correct Excel budget template that we provide. Now, there have been some entities that have, that have submitted budgets uh, with their own accounting software. Sometimes those are useful, but a lot of times they're hard to, to read. And, and it's difficult when we are trying to compare, you know, uh, like program areas, recipients and what they're doing. So it makes it easier for us. On top of that, when people submit, a lot of times they do not put the name of the organization or the date of the submission. And I think that going forward, that would tremendously uh, help us with, with uh, how we put everything, how we file everything away, and then just kind of finding your last revised budget or your latest budget. I think that's it. Next slide, please. So as Bradley said earlier, it's very, very important that the budget, the overall budget total, equal the total award and be the same. And this is at the top of our template. That's that box indicates that number 272807.79. What you're seeing there, that's the grand total for the entire three years of the budget. And so that should always match your award total. Okay, next slide. Now, just like the total, the exact total should be matched. This grant requires, the grants require that the total be split and dispersed in three equal yearly disbursements, indicating that each year, and you see here, it says year two, total project budget, $90,935.93. You can see there next to it, it says equal years, because in this budget, every year was equal. It'll tell you when you're filling that in, if it is not equal, uh, but but one of the requirements is that every year be equal. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Next, next slide. And as you submit your budget, we have gotten some submissions that do not have any kind of description on the right hand side. And so it's important because it helps you to 
remember why it is you're allocating that money there. And then it helps us to make adequate assessments as to whether or not those are appropriate amounts or whether they can be justified. Uh, next slide. Now, because these, because the total grant is dispersed in three equal yearly payments and every year must be the same, it does not mean that every year the line item expenses need to be the same. So I have seen a lot of people that turn in an initial budget indicating that they're going to spend, you know, $10,000 on equipment in year one, $10,000 on equipment in year two, $10,000 on equipment in year three. And so I find that as you're planning, most entities will, will, will purchase the, the necessary equipment for the first year and then years two and three, then that money, the $10,000, then that, that can be allocated to other line items within that year. And then that, that makes it so that it's a better planning tool for you. And it also helps us to make sure that uh, you know, that we don't, we're not going back and forth asking questions as to what, what is being purchased with $30,000 over the course of three years, just as an example. Um, next slide, please. So again, with the equipment, we talked about the uh, examples of some people saying that because they thought that the years needed to be the same, then that the budget line items need to stay exactly the same. They do not. Um, now, as far as this goes, you can see here that this is regarding equipment. And I did want to point out that no single piece of equipment should exceed $2,500. Uh, now, if you have to buy 10 computers at $250 each, and that's justified with your, S, with your scope of work, then that's allowed, but a single piece of equipment should remain at $2,500 or below. Also, it is useful to include approximate price and quantity in the description next to the equipment line. And you can see here that this one has $120 for a portable printer. So anybody looking at that would say, that's reasonable. I can see $120 for a printer. That's pretty much it. I have seen some, and I will, I can use a better example for the next time, but I've seen some where some people have listed out maybe a list of six items that have approximate costs and then the quantity, the approximate quantity, just to give us an idea. It doesn't have to be exact on a budget because it's a planning tool, but gives us an idea of, you know, what you're using it for. Aside from that, I like this budget because you can see in the description for the rent, they put a third of the rental cost associated with the primary youth program activity site. That, that, that just makes me think that, that they're being uh, very mindful of, of what they're doing, using this as a planning tool. And then the fact that they said it was a third that they were using per month makes it so that that's, that's pretty honest, I think, right? Um, if you look at this now, Things like paper and supplies for office, that's all kind of general, provided that it's not an exorbitant amount and makes sense. That's not something that needs to be elaborated on in that regard. But you can see here that any time that clients benefit on something, so you can see that supplies for clients, uh, and I don't think this one has client stipends, but it has fees down at the bottom. And you can see how one line item says cost of 60 uniforms for income eligible youth. And so that that's perfectly justified. I think that's great. That's a great amount for 60 uniforms. So I would, I would say, you know what, that's, that's great. The 50, you can see down at the bottom, the 50 tournament entry fees, and it gives them, I think it, and it shows uh, the fact that there's going to be 50 people that benefit from that line item. I have found myself calling uh, organizations to ask them why well, you listed this here for your for your clients. But my question is how many clients, how many different clients will benefit from this every year? And then you can see here the tournament management team and data management and tracking. 
they are part of the subcontractors contractors line item in which you know you give an amount per month but you can see here that that they showed us exactly which entities which subcontractors were going to read to that they were going to work with and, and what they would receive the amounts that they would receive so i think that this this budget was was very well done in my opinion i think uh, next slide And I think, and, and now this is kind of a general guide that I think would be helpful to refer to as you guys are filling out your budgets or looking at what you can and cannot do. Again, we have their capital expenditures for acquiring equipment, all items over 2,500. I think it's useful to note here, as some people have, sub have submitted budgets indicating that they're gonna pay for, you know, social media and website uh, for their program. But the important thing to note is that, or they say advertising, any, anything associated with, with this grant must be for the grant program deliverables versus raising the profile of your entire organization. And if, and if you can make that clear when you submit your budget, then that avoids me having to contact someone to ask them or to make that clear and ask them you know, to revise it. Uh, I think that's, Pretty much it. You can see here. There's no, you know, fundraising costs. Uh, uh, of course, gambling, goods and services for for personal use. I just think that this is very helpful to have to refer to uh, at all times. And then these are kind of just frequently asked questions. Uh, I don't know, Bradley. Do you want to go through this, or do you want me to go through? It? Sure. Yeah, I can go on through this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so th this goes back to the advertising costs. So are all marketing advertising costs disallowable? Um, so you cannot do advertising for your general organization. However, advertising, whether flyer, social media, specific to the program that the grant is for is completely allowable. So everything has to be for that program, not general, you know, use for uh, your program, um, for your organization. Uh, can rent char be charged back to the grant when the property is owned by the organization? And the answer to that is no. Uh, that would be the same as because mortgage payments are not allowable costs, um, because capital expenditures are not allowable costs. So unfortunately, no. What documents are required in terms of tracking the use of funds? Things like timesheets, payroll distribution reports, receipts, invoices, a canceled check or other proof of payment, credit card statements, that sort of thing. Uh, tolls by category on your budget should be turned in. Uh, specific requests, receipts will be requested as needed. So that budget to actual form, you just need to put your totals, but specific backup may be requested as needed. Uh, how many employees do you need before you have to get workers' compensation insurance? If you are the only oh, owner or only officer of the company and there are no other employees, then you do not need workers' compensation insurance. However, if you have even one more employee, workers' compensation ins insurance is required. Next, yes. Uh, so when we're talking about indirect costs, so this would be shown on your project administrative fee uh, 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 costs on your budget. So indirect costs or administrative costs that cannot be directly associated with the grant, such as administrative salaries. Um, th this can be anything. Um, you're allowed to put up to 15% on your budget. And these are uh, costs that, that, that we're not going to be asking backup for because these are, uh, say, you have um, an administrative assistant that works on um, doing things for multiple projects or just helps run the, an office manager, for example, that just helps run the um, um, organization but doesn't work particularly on this project. That, you know, costs, the, the administrative costs or indirect costs would be something that would pay for their you know, salary, which is still something you need to do to run your organization, even if it's not specific to this project. 
Uh, the can budget be revised once again it can be moved every once every six months and we'll need prior approval be requesting change uh, you can move one line item from one line item budget to another uh, you cannot move from year to year and the total cost of the grant cannot be changed is there a limit how much employees can be paid executive salaries are limited to two hundred three thousand seven hundred annually next slide please Is rent an expense that can be paid by the grant? Yes, rent of office space directly associated with the grant can be part of the funding. Services for the grant are provided, must be provided in LA County. Um, but yes, rent is perfectly possible. Um, however, mortgage payments are not. Um, how should budgets be completed? Uh, budgets should be completed for each 12 month period as part of the grant. The annual bay budget will add it together for the total award amount. The budget is based on the scope of work and milestones as defined in the proposal. So that's something that's also reviewed is what's happening in the budget. Does this make sense with the scope of work and the milestones yeah, that, that were defined in the proposal? Next slide, please. So another quite, uh, frequently asked question, what are fringe benefits? So these are your benefit amounts um, that are in your budget under your payroll. Uh, fringe benefits include insurance costs, sick pay, taxes such as work uh, or compensation, and other costs you must pay in addition to staff wages you're employing. So you, the social security, all of that. The fringe benefit costs cannot equal more than 30% of the staff salary. If you're unsure um, about the percentage amount that you pay in fringe benefits, recommend and putting it at least a minimum of 9% to cover your uh, FICA um, taxes for your employer and unemployment insurance. Uh, you're not required to use the fringe benefit lines, but it can help you more accurately account for the true cost of the staff of the organization. Uh, next slide, please. And here is a tool that, uh, that can be requested where you would go, okay, we've got, you know, our total annual wages. Uh, this is how much we're paying in medical, dental, and vision portions, you know, organization paid for life insurance, uh, other benefits such as a 401k match. And then we can go and look at the FICA um, amount, the 7.65. Um, and that would give us a total fringe benefits of 18,960, which would give you an 18.96%. Um, out of the $100,000. So you can just then go from there, take your salary, take 18.96%, that's your benefit cost. Next slide, please. So what if we have a surplus? So you did say you did not spend the total amount that you were gonna spend for that year. If you have a surplus each year, review your budget so that you're not having one again in the next fiscal year. Furthermore, that surplus will need to be accounted for in the next year. Hmm. I think this one's not worked quite right. Um, so the total amounts will, will show a surplus of the total dollars. Uh, your budget won't move from year to year. Um, note that if you have any remaining funds um, after your contract ends for the total amount, if you have your total funds left, they can't ask for that money back if you did not use it. However, they would only be asking that after the uh, completion of the last, of the third year. So if you underspent one year, you can then, oh, you should show, yes. If you have a surplus of $30,000 next year, you should show an overage of $30,000 to account for the previous year's surplus. So um, yes. <laughs> I, 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 I misspread right there for the moment, um, but yes. So you, if you're under spending in one year, uh, you can go over budget the next year. That's perfectly fine. And that will be something that you're gonna wanna do uh, to spend um, money on your project so that you don't have to give any of that funding back. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, once again, uh, I think this is, yeah. Can rent be charged back to the grant when the property is owned by the organization? No. Uh, merge are not allowable costs. 
Um, and then once again, timesheets, payroll distribution reports, all of that are required in terms of tracking for funds. Next slide, please. Did we, I think, I think our slides, <laughs> I think we've got duplicate, but yes, no commercial print ads um, decided to raise organization are not allowable, but um, for project they are. Next slide, please. Um, so hopefully that may have answered some more uh, of your questions. Um, but if you have any more questions, uh, we I want to go from. Um, we've got questions in the chat, so we want to start. This. Yes, we do, Bradley. Mm -hmm. So we'll start off with the first question. If we are adding in new positions for year two because we underspent in year one, how do we add those in and keep all three year totals the same? So uh, if you're adding new positions to year two, uh, you would have to, if you're accounting for the, the budget, you'll have to um, basically take um, amounts in year two from other line items to account for them. Also, um, there is a possibility that you could put, um, let's say you underspent in payroll, um, you could uh, essentially have a, um, a zero line item for year one and in year two, um, you know, budget wise, and then you'll show that because you didn't spend, say, uh, you hired someone else for $30,000 that you were over budget $30,000 in year one, and then you're or you're under budget in year one in this position that, you know, didn't exist <laughs> for you yet. And then you're over budget by $30,000 in year two. And that'll even out on your total budget for that line item for the project would be $30,000. So yeah, you would basically be underspending in that line item in year one and over spending in year two. And that's perfectly fine. Thank you, Bradley. You previously stated we could be under or over budget in different years. That is correct. Yes. Um, yes, you can be over budget and under budget in different years. Um, I think where the big, uh, where you, where you want to really be looking for the most is where are you over the whole three year period at the end? So once again, they're not spending limits. So you could be under budget one year and over budget the next year. And if those total up to what the, both of your years would have been total wise, you know, combined, then I think you're, you're, in, you're in a good spot. Awesome. Thank you. Can funds be used for food for programming? Yes. As long as you know that that food is part of, you know, your program. Yes, you can. Okay. And should we include CFCI logo or anything acknowledging where funding came from? Um, I think Rebecca, where you, do you want to answer this one? <laughs> I'm not sure on the, on that, where, on, on any sort of programming or anything, whether or not they should sure. be. Sure, whether, whether you should be acknowledging. You should work with your grant advocate about um, who and how to acknowledge the funding for your program. Um, there are specifics, there are brand guidelines for how to acknowledge the program. So please, if you want to acknowledge the funding, you should work with your grant advocate to get that correct language and any logos or um, other branding you need to have. Awesome. Thank you. Um, for program area 23, can I begin to recruit and hire employees now for the program? Um, so I believe the, the contracts would be going into effect service-wise starting July 1st. That is correct? That's correct. So any any money you spend before July 1st is not reimbursable. This is not a reimbursement grant. Um, so only receipts, only funds that you spend after the contract start date of Ju right now, we're saying July 1st. It, it might differ a little bit for individuals. 
Uh, but do, do not spit, do not start your program now. Do not spend any money now. You do not have any money to spend right now. Um, when your contract start date passes, that is when you can begin spending these funds. Right. So yeah, anything that you would spend, for example, if you were looking to hire recruit employees, that would have to be from some other funding and not from the CFC, CFCI grant. Thank you. If we feel there will be an overage right now due to a lower cost of a line item, can we add another line item right now as long as we remain on a budget? Yes, that would be part of the budget revision form, uh, budget revision process. Yes, you can add another line item and move the cost from where you think there's going to be an overage into that new line item. Yes. And since we are able to move line items and can go over or under budget, what requires a revision? Um, what would require a revision is that if for whatever reason your spending has looked so different than what you thought it was going to be, that that budget is no longer useful for you to, um, to, to plan off of and make decisions with, then that's where that we, you, when you'd want to make a revision. It's that when when there when there are significant differences, um, that's when you're going to want to have to um, um, uh, make a revision, so that it can still be useful to you. Perfect. Thank you. That's all the questions from the chat. I believe Betty has her hand raised. Betty, if you want to come off mute. Hi. Um, I actually, the question was kind of answered by you in terms of um, adding a line item. So what if you need to add eight line items, say for staff, that you didn't originally account for? However, you're still well under budget with what you spent. Do you still need the budget revision or is there a way on Excel to add eight line items? Um, I did a budget revision for this time, but um, I just was wondering in the future, we uh, if you if you are still under budget um, and you haven't spent all the money, um, do you still have to do the budget budget revision? Um, if it's a significant amount, I, I would think yes. I I would think in the case of if you're adding eight employees, um, that is something that you would definitely want to have a budget revision for, so that we can have, you know. The description of who they are and, and figure out, you know, is this appropriate for, um, you know, the project and everything. Look at that and review it and approve. Yes, but um, okay. yeah, I think anything. And I haven't. Anytime you were adding personnel, I think that would require a budget revision. Yes. I have another question on the budget revision. It did not say um, where to put the names of the new people. It just said. Um, I believe it said something like, um, why are you doing the changes or something like that? Mm -hmm. okay. So is that, so uh, is that okay? So typically a, uh, a lot of the budget revisions that I've seen have um, um, uh, put people's names there, you know, in that. Okay, that's so, sort of, that's, so that's just... supposed to be kind of like your, your description line. Okay, cool. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we have John with a raised hand. John, if you could come off mute and ask your question, please. Uh, yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my question is, did we need to submit uh, budgets for all three years uh, prior to receiving the grant money, or do we uh, submit the budget uh, for each new fiscal year? Um, before... Uh, uh... It, uh, finishing up for being awarded the grant and the contract, um, it would require their part of one of the documentation of that is a budget for each of the three years. So okay. there's a budget form uh, that has been sent out and it has a section for each year one, year two, year three. Yes. All right. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And Bradley, that was it for questions. Um, oh, never mind. There was one more. When accounting for underspending in year one, TP use as surplus in that line the following year. What's TP? 
Oh, to use a surplus in the file. I think it's. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. That makes um, sense. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So the budget, you can't move the budget funds around, but uh, it basically, you'll be looking at um, when looking at the full three year total, um, they'll, they'll add up. So, um, but if you were going, oh, I spent $30,000 less than I thought I was going to in year one and you want to use something with that actual physical money, uh, you could add another line, say, in uh, year one that says, I don't, I don't, you know, um, you know, something for, you know, you want to run extra classes or something. Um, so you put that line item in year one, move that $30,000 to that line item, and you'd show that you're $30,000 over. Um, and it's, you know, preferable that you, you know, you let us know why, so we're not <laughs> necessarily asking questions of, oh, why are you 30,000? But we'd see that in the revision. And then you put that same line item in year two, and then you would charge to that. And then at the end of year one and two, you'll have had 30,000 total budget and you'd spent 30,000. So we'd be looking at that as well. So, yeah. Cool. And then it says, um, could we talk about backups? De mm -hmm. um, Dela, could you go a little bit more into clarification about that? What do you mean by backups? Hi, you guys. It, it, you guys were saying something about backups and like in the beginning of um, <laughs> the sessions, and I was trying to understand it, but I couldn't really get to understand the backup because the next slide had came about and it was it was over. Okay, okay. So backups would be um, any proof of that you spent that money. So for example, that might be payroll records. Uh, it might be if you bought something, it might be a receipt. Um, it might be an invoice that you received that for something, um, or it might be, um, uh, purchase orders, um, a, a canceled check, uh, credit card statements, but anything that says if you spent a certain amount of funds in one of these line items, then you should have, um, a, a proof material proof that shows that those funds were spent there. For example, if you had to uh, write a check to um, secure a meeting space, for example, for your program, you would then have that canceled check and show that you wrote this check to, you know, I don't know, a local library that has a meeting space that, that you can rent or something like that. Um, okay. Yeah. So that would be an example. But yeah, it just it should add up. You spent spent that much, then you should have proof that you spent that much. And I can go there. Okay. Thank you, Bradley. Thank you, Mina. I appreciate it. Of course. So um uh, after July 1st, so this is a year three grantee. After July 1st, we will need funding immediately to get started. How can uh, how can we obtain the funds to move forward? So um as we're putting this all together. Um, there will be, uh, for the first quarter, you would be receiving funding for the first quarter of year one prior to doing the work. So, and then, so then at quarter two, once every information is there, the next round of payments will be happening, basically always being paid in advance. So, yeah, we are going to be working on getting all that funding out prior to July 1st. Awesome, thank you. Rebecca, would you be able to go to the slide that references the backups, please? Okay, so this is probably the best one here. So uh, documents required in terms of tracking use of funds. So like I said, this could be timesheets, payroll distribution reports, um, receipts, invoiced invoices, canceled check, other proof of payments. It might be uh, credit card statements. It might be um, like um, purchase orders, 
and anything like that, credit card statements. Um, so just as long as you know what what you're showing on these reports matches up with the amount that you charge the project, then um, then it's uh, smooth sailing. Awesome, thank you. And I don't think there's any other questions that haven't right, been answered. I think answered. we've got here, it says, what if we didn't have a zero line item in year one? Well, what you can do is when the um, budget revision form is filled out, if you're in year two and you wanna make that change, you can create that budget line item in year one, even going backwards. So uh, you'd be able to make changes to all three years, not just your current year. Because every year has to be the same. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bradley. Mm -hmm. Any final questions? Oh, it says, can we purchase multiple equipment items that in total go over $2,500? Yes. For example, if you bought uh, five computers for a thousand dollars each. Let's just say that, uh, that would be allowable because each individual piece of equipment, each individual item is under $2,500. Yes. Have all the budgets for grantees been reviewed? If we have not heard from you, that means we are good. Um, so not all budgets have finished the review process. Um, and then some budgets we reviewed and didn't have any additional questions. So maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Whether you've heard from us doesn't necessarily mean that uh, things were good or bad, but yes, we are still in the process of reviewing budgets for cohort three, yes. Amazing. Um, Bradley, if they are currently going through quarterly milestone reporting, because that is due today, and their budget hasn't been reviewed for whatever reason, what do you recommend they do so that their report does not get delayed? Oh, for this is for cohort one and two? For years one and two, yes. Okay. Um, so I believe we need, the milestones are what um what we're looking at when we are so i guess with the budget being reviewed um should they just upload what they have um yeah cause, well i don't i don't think having the budget to actuals is going to uh necessarily as long as they've got their milestones and everything, correct? Well, the budget expenditure does have a um, required asterisk. Mm -hmm. So. Um, okay, yeah, I haven't been in this. Is This is uploading for Apricot? Yes. Joanne, Carol, would you be able to um, confirm, please? Joanne, Carol? We'll, we'll have to get back to you guys on that one. But um, I believe it just upload what you can and then your grant advocate will get back to you if anything. Okay. Yeah, because because we don't want to have holding up the rest of it. There. Yes, we don't. And mm -hmm. again, they are due today. All right, so I, I believe that is it. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Remember that this webinar is being recorded. It will be uploaded onto our website by next Wednesday. If you have any further questions in regards to your budgets, please contact your grant advocate. They are an amazing resource and liaison between our finance department and you. Next week, we will have a whole new webinar at 2 p.m. Um, covering the topic of DEI. 
So thank you so much again, everyone, and have a great Wednesday. Bye. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you, and happy hump day to everybody. <laughs>